Hi guys. Hi everyone. My name is Danae and I'm from the Billie Jean King Main Library. And I'm Miss Chenda from the, um, today I'm at Mark Twain Library and welcome to Picture This. Yay! Okay, this is our monthly conversation sharing great books from our picture book collection airing the second Wednesday of every month. Danae, for this session, what do you have to share? Ooh, okay, so my first book today is I Promise by LeBron James, and it is illustrated by Nina Mata. So what it is in this book, it's an inspiring book that encourages children to give their best and never give up. Um, in this book, we I love how they have characters that reflect everybody in there. So I love that and the illustrations are beautiful. And um, this book is made mainly the words that they say at the school that he created in his hometown. And it's called the I Promise School. And it's a place committed to helping them and their families reach their full potential. So for example, one of them says, I promise to do all my homework and also to be helpful and respectful to others. And I love the hashtag. It says hashtag strive for greatness. And in the back, you see a picture of LeBron and his daughter, which is awesome. Go Lakers. So this is my first book. My second book is a very slow and nice book that tells us to slow down. And the title is Hurry Up, a book about slowing down. And the author is Kate Gilpuric. And hopefully I said her name right. I was practicing on it. But I love this. It says, stop, stop and to slow down. <laughs> So um, for this book, it tells us to slow down and to take a look at everything around us and just explore and breathe and relax. And it's the illustrations are wonderful. So if you are wanting to find a book to kind of just relax and slow down, this is the one for you. So those are my first two books. What about you, Chenda? Well, those are great books. I like the slowing down one because with the um, holiday coming up, I'm excited about the holidays, but I'm also a little worried this year. Um, this book I'm sharing is I'm Worried by Michael Ian Black. And it shows a little potato that says, I'm worried. And it goes on the little girl asks him, what are you worried about? About the future? And then what are, what are you worried about the future is that bad things will happen. But then the little girl and the little, the pink flamingo um, reminds um, the, the potato that, you know, bad things happen, but over time they turn out okay. And so you have to just talk about what's worrying you and what's the bad thing that you're worrying about. The thing of living in the now, because you know, the future, which is just, you're just gonna happen and just enjoy the now. And then there's little potato trying to talk after you talk about what's worrying you and what bad thing have passed. And then you just enjoy the now. It's the better way than worrying about the future. So it's a really cute book to talk about our feelings and what's worrying and what's stressing to little ones and yourself too. And the good practice is also to write it out if you're worried about something so you can talk about it with each other. And then another way to kind of like get rid of my worries is to try to sing silly dilly um, Christmas songs this year is Where Did They Hide My Presents by Ellen Katz and David Cottrell. It's a really cool book and it's just um, taking um, new lyrics um, and singing it to the tune of a traditional Christmas song. Like this one, it's Our Friendly Mailman to the tune of Frosty the Snowman. It goes like, Our Friendly Mailman has a big bag, bag on his back with a billing card from some packages twice the size of Santa's sack. So it's really funny and you can make up your own lyrics too. Like this one at the mall to the tune of Deck the Halls. 
at the malls, no parking spaces. Mama, 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 can we go home? It's really funny. So I hope you guys check this out and take time to just enjoy the now. And what about you, Danae? What do you have? What else do you have? So I have two more books um, to sh talk about. Um, and the, the, this book is called titled You Matter by Christian Robinson. It's another inspiring and encouraging book that uh, let's reminds you that you matter, that even when something is out of reach, like the Tyrannosaurus Rex's arms, or when everyone is too busy to help, you matter. So I love this book where um, it talks about certain feelings or situations, and it reminds you that you still matter and nothing, um, nothing, nothing will stop. Even if you fall down, this is really sweet. And then if you have to start all over again, this is a great book to encourage you to let, remind you that you matter. And this one I love, and it's called, Can I Give You a Squish? And it's by Emily Nielsen. So this is a mer boy. His name is Kai, and he loves to give hugs to everyone. And this little fellow right here is a pufferfish, and he's shy. So one day, Kai gave him a hug, and he did not like it, and he puffed up so big. And Kai was so, he felt so bad that he like made him feel, um, made him feel bad. So what he did, his friend, the crab said, don't worry, maybe there's something else you can give besides a squish to show that you want to be friends. So they made up certain handshakes and they made a thin bump. <laughs> so thin bump and then, well, the squishy fish or the puppy fish really loved it. And in this book, it even shows how like each of the friends have different types of handshakes that they like. And I loved how the author, if you read it in the excerpt over here, it tells you that the author um, is introducing children to the important topic of consent in a lighthearted way. So. I thought this was really cute, and you don't really get to see a lot of little mer boys, so it was mm -hmm. really sweet. Um, if you want to read this book, please check it out, and it's by Emily Nielsen. So those are the other two that I have, and I have another two, but I want, what about you, Chenda? Do you have any other books to share first? Yeah, I do, but I really like that, um, that mer boy book, because, you know, sometimes it's always nice to practice before you give somebody a hug that you've never met before, they don't know, you can ask, may I give you a hug or is it okay? And then over Zoom, we can always do the, the finger kind of wave to each other. There you go. Hi. That's our, that's our virtual hug. Our virtual fist bump also. Yay. And so the, 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 um, the other two books I have is Annie and the Wild Animal by Jan Brett. Do you want to share my book? Okay, so this one is a little book about Annie, the little girl who loves her cat, Taffy. Right here, she is holding Taffy on her lap. But then as the snow is coming down during winter, Annie noticed that Taffy has stopped playing. And Taffy has also is eating more than usual. And she usually sleeps all day. And then she finds Taffy cuddled or um, find her in strange places, like hiding places. And when one morning Annie could not find Taffy anywhere in the house, she's feeling lonely. So she decided she needed to make a new friend. And she made some corn cake, and but she leaves it outside. And all these winter, different winter animal comes by. There's a bob cat there's a bear but can you really make friends with those animals not very likely until spring comes along and then annie cannot make any more corn cakes so she's feeling very lonely and the animal has left to search for their own food in the spring and that's where annie has a surprise 
because taffy does show up in the end. So if you want to find out what is taffy surprise, you have to check out this book. And then my other book is a very funny chase book of Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast by Josh Funk. It's very funny because Lady um, Pancake and Sir French Toast were friends and they were living in the refrigerator deep in the fridge and behind the green peas way past the tofu and left of the peas up in the corner and back by a roast sat Lady Pancake and beside Sir French Toast until Miss Bree comes along and says, oh, you know what, there's only a single drop left of the syrup. And instead of friends, they became competitors and they the chase has begun and they gone, they leap and they jump and they fly off the shelf in the refrigerator trying to get to the last drop of syrup. And at the end, you see the different section of refrigerator with all the different food and stuff. And that's a really funny food chase if you like to read fast. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that one. But this is the first book of the series. There are other books within the series. So if you want to, Mr. Ne is going to show us how we can find other books of this by uh, in this series by the author, Josh Funk. You want to show us? Sure, I'm going to share the screen. So I'm going to show our catalog. And I'm going to do a keyword search. So the keyword, I'm just um, going to take like a couple words out of the title. So I'm going to type in Lady Pancake. And we're going to see what comes up with that. And there you go. It shows us the books in the series. And which is, and this one, Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast is the one that Chenda was showing us. Mm -hmm. And if you want to request it, all you have to do is just click on the request button. Mm -hmm. Oops, I didn't log in. But if you click on the request button, you'll be able to um, order it and make sure you send or pick it up at a library that's open for curbside mm -hmm. pickup. Mm -hmm. And also, if you enjoy the books that uh, Josh Funk has written, you just click on the author and you will see a list of books that we have in our system that um, have been written by him. So we have many books, actually. So we have so much to enjoy. So that is how you can find more books by the series or even by the author. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing request a book to um, pick the library that's open for the to go so you can pick it up and also um, the holiday dates are coming up so um, we're going to be closed longer for Christmas we're going to be closed on um, Christmas day so make sure you get your books all before um, Christmas um, holiday closure this year do you have other books to share I do I actually have two more books that I want to share with everyone and my first book is Cool Girl for Hanukkah. And I'm going to Okay. So Cool Girl for Hanukkah is a book about a young girl. For every night on Hanukkah, she um, gets a present. So she is wanting an animal every night, but she keeps getting unusual presents. So for example, one of the nights she, and she was like, oh, she's like, I thought I might get a teeny tiny hamster, but she ended up getting a branchy plant. So each night she keeps getting like weird presents, but then in the end, there's a reason why. So this is a really fun book um, that is a story about Hanukkah and the family it's really sweet. And also in the back, there's a recipe for kugel. Um, and if you can tell, that's actually the title underneath the barcode. Um, and this is kugel. It's a picture. So this is uh, kugel for Hanukkah. And kugel is actually a casserole. So you can either make it out of potato or noodles. And it can be either sweet or savory. And Hanukkah, this is actually, um, Hanukkah is, means in, um, means dedication in Hebrew. 
And in the Jewish holiday, also known as the Festival of Lights or the Festival of Dedication, and it represents joy. It is celebrated on the 25th day of the Hebrew month of Kis Kislev. Um, so for this year, it will be on, Hanukkah will be on December 10th through the 18th, and it lasts for eight days. And it's usually, oops, yeah, and it, and it lasts for, and it's celebrated usually sometimes in November and December. So this is a, it's a really nice book for Hanukkah. Oh, and then my last one is my first Kwanzaa. This is actually not a holiday. It's a celebration for to honor African culture and to also inspire African Americans. Uh, the author is Karen Katz, and she has written a lot of books that I love using also for my story times because the illustrations are beautiful and I love how she writes. Um, also, in this book, it tells us a very simple way of explaining what Kwanzaa is. So for Kwanzaa, they actually even have candles like in Hanukkah, but they have seven candles and what holds the candles is called a kinara, kinara. And there's three red, one black, and three green. So they light a candle every night to celebrate a special idea. So for example, the first night, as on the first day of Kwanzaa, neighbors come to visit and we ask Habari Ghani. And it means, what's the news? So also, I guess it brings people together because it's um, the first day is called unity. And they say, they say, umuja. So this is really neat, and it explains each day. Um, so if you want to know more about that. Also, another great fact that I found is that Kwanzaa was started in 1966 by a professor that is actually at Cal State University, Long Beach. His name is Dr. Maulana Karenga. And he is a professor and chair department of Africana Studies at Cal State University in Long Beach. So go Long Beach! We have Kwanzaa. Yay, thank you so much. So Chenda, what about you? What do you have for us? Okay, for my last two share, I have Mr. Willoughby's Christmas Tree by Robert Berry, um, B-A-R-R-Y. And it's just a book about um, how we sometimes we have so much that we can actually share it and um, uh, make a huge difference in someone's life. This is Mr. Willoughby's and he ordered a big, big Christmas tree for his mansion. And it's so big though, that even his big house that is was too tall. So what did his um, butler do? His butler, Baxter the butler, top off, um, clop off, um, chop off the top and it was such a waste that he didn't want to just throw it away. So he took it and gave it to Miss Adelaide, the maid. And then Miss Adelaide in her little room got the Christmas tree and it was just too tall for her room also. And she chopped off the top and so forth. And then each time someone chop off the top because it was too much, someone can use it because they didn't want it to go to waste and goes through all the way even to the rabbit and the fox, and even the mouse could use a little um, part of the Christmas tree. And it just goes to show at Christmas time, there's always something to share. So that's Mr. Willoughby's Christmas tree. And then my last one is a hopeful book, and it's a funny book. It's about take your pet to school day. I hope one day we can go back to school and you guys can come to the library. This book is by Linda Ashman. It's pictures by Suzanne Kaufman. And it's a really funny book. Imagine if you are going back to school and there's a letter that's sent in the mail that says, this Friday, you can take your pet to school. And what did the kids, the kids with the pets say? Yeah. They're so happy. I see like a little container of ant farm, um, typical goldfish, a turtle, but a horse, 
an alpaca, really? Oh, they're all having so much. There's even a pig. Oh my goodness. They're all having such a great time in school and the horse, but then the principal. Oh no, there's too much chaos. She's wondering how come, who said the pets could come to school? And they don't know. And then the, the little student show her the letter, but she said she didn't write that note. She didn't write that letter. Who wrote this? You have to check out the book to find out who sent those letter home. Oh, do you think the principal will continue to let them bring their pets to school? We don't know. You'll have to read it and find out for yourself. This is a really funny book. I can't wait for you guys to come back to the library and maybe you guys will get to go back to school and take your pets to school. But we're doing Zoom um, school, um, homeschooling at home. Do you guys have to get a chance to show your pets at home? Danae, if you can go take a pet to school, what would you take? Ooh, I think I would bring a giraffe to school. You would take a giraffe? What about you, Chenda? I would probably my favorite animal would be an elephant. <gasps> you think of a fit? I don't think so, but maybe you can have class outside then. <laughs> yes, it's just exciting and it's fun to think about it, huh? Yeah. So, Do you have any more books for us, Chenda? I do, I do, I do. Before we go, I just want to recommend this whole series by William B. His last name is B-E-E, -E, and the author and illustrator is such a cool artist. He have all these very simple books. It's great for babies, well, mostly for toddlers who, are, who like to name things, identify things. And Stanley is a whole series of Stanley books. There's Stanley the Builder, Stanley in the Garage, Stanley Train, and then Stanley at School. So Stanley and all his animal friends, they love to do all these fun things. And I love the beginning of each book. It shows all the items that you would need to go to school and what you do at school. You take your backpack and your bags and you hang it up but they get to take their teddy bear to school. And there's all the supplies. Really great limited vocabulary, just great for toddlers and preschoolers to share and enjoy over the um, holidays. So guys, hope you guys check out. And there's other books by William B. also in this system, just look it up. And so this is it, that's our time. Thank you for joining us for Picture Bris. So remember, if you want to find the titles we've talked about today in our catalog, just search for Picture This 1220. And we'll see you next month. So thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.